It's here, the long-awaited TV show crossover, Supergirl meets The Flash, for one hour on CBS. In truth, I'm not too sure how I feel about this episode. I mean, there were parts that were pretty good, pretty amazing. There were parts where I just sat there like, what? Really? You're gonna do this? And then there were parts where it just, I sat there like, meh, you could have done a lot more there. Overall, it was entertaining and fun episode. Quick heads up, there'll be spoilers in this review. Firstly, my rating. Uh, like I said, it was entertaining, but I felt it was, for the anticipation and the build-up, it felt it was a little underwhelming. So I placed it between entertaining and meh. I really enjoyed the last episode, the Manhunter episode, I mean. It was quite good. I didn't know what to expect at the time. Apart from it would be more fun. I think in the whole episode, Alex and John Jones, or Martian Manhunter, whatever. Not even John Jones, he wasn't even mentioned, I don't think. I think Alex was mentioned once in brief to Barry about that's her lab and oh, you have a sister? Thinking that she's probably an alien, but that's the only mention of her. I thought maybe they'd have at least tried to contact each other in some weird way, and plus John Jones can morph into anything, so uh, maybe they saved money to use the Flash's effects in this episode. Alright, let's start with the things that I had an issue with in this episode. At least then we can end on a happier note. So, to begin with, it the opening logo, I was a bit disappointed that they didn't incorporate both the show's logos, opening logos. The shield, some electricity sparking out, or some Flash-esque, which they usually do for any Arrow and Flash crossovers. Also what bugged me is taking Shivan, Shivan, to the DEO and not even trying to cover it up. That was quite strange, I thought. Just let her walk around and then she gets to walk around and she sees Livewire. Just the usual person and then now she knows that Wynn knows Supergirl. And talking about Shivan, whatever. Let's talk about Banshee, she becomes Banshee. But then when she teams up with Livewire and they decide to work together, instead of transforming into this curse-possessed lady, she dresses up. We have to assume she puts on face paint and white contact lenses. She looks like she could have easily wa walked out of that scene in Batman vs Superman, the Day of the Dead kind of dress up. Also when the Flash first, when they fight Silver Banshee and Livewire, he throws lightning at Livewire. I just thought, uh, maybe they wanted to show cool effects to people who watch Supergirl but not Flash, I guess. But it just, to people who watch both, it looked, it just made him, mm, you throw lightning at somebody who controls electricity, it's not a smart move. And the finale, both Banshee and Livewire are defeated by firemen with a water cannon. I thought they could have made it so much cooler, it could have been a cool team up, a cool battle, a cool fight at the end, but I guess they did it to fix Supergirl's reputation in National City. A little bit disappointed, but nothing too bad, so let's get on to the positives. It was entertaining, it was funny to see Win, like totally geek out about Flash being from another world, and completely geeking out that they can time travel. That raises the question, which world is this? It's definitely not Earth 2, she would have heard of at least Zoom and The Flash. Can't be Earth 3, because that's where the evil counterparts of heroes are. So, um, maybe it's just call it CBS World. Because it did, this episode did get a little bit meta, with uh, Cat Grant stating that the four of them, Kara, Barry, Wynn and James Olsen, look like they belong in a CW show, I think. That was quite funny, quite true. The effects in the show looked quite good. I was uh, gladly surprised to see uh, Harriet Harris in the show, who played uh, Silver Banshee's aunt. It was also funny to see Barry just run over, just take off his mask and be like, Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm Barry Allen, here I am. I, this is not my world, so I don't care. There may be me in Central City, but he's not the Flash. And uh, they got remarkably close really quickly in that short time frame. Maybe it's an understanding between superheroes. Finally, Kara and James Olsen kiss, but also finally, I guess, the uh, Myriad is operational. 
Nan has finally got it to work and he's dedicating it to Astra. So I guess Myriad is some, some sort of brain controlling device, so will it be an army they're making? We shall see, but in all it was a, a fun episode, it was, it was a bit of a filler it felt like, but a good filler. Look forward to the next ep episode to see what's happening. See you then. Oh yeah, I completely forgot that Silver Banshee was able to punch and knock over Supergirl. Uh, some people had like questions like why and how could this happen. I guess it's because the curse is kind of magic and we all know Superman and Supergirl vulnerable to magic. So it makes sense that she did bleed from the Banshee cry and get punched by her.